Good morning. Thank you for joining me for another Five Good Minutes with the Word. I'm Barry Bryson, and we're concluding our study of the book of Amos today. Uh, Amos is one of the longer minor prophets, and like Hosea, he prophesies to the northern kingdom. Um, and he's prophesied irrevocable judgment, um, and, and he has identified their sins not as idolatry, but as the idolatry of greed and the enjoyment of excess when others are suffering. So it's important, it's an important book for us for that reason, because it really hits home uh, to, um, to anyone who lives in a, in a, in a prosperous um, nation um, and, and enjoys uh, a level of blessings that far exceeds those enjoyed by most people, which is where most people who live in this country find themselves. This difficult um, book, so focused on judgment and on prosecuting the sins of the people, ends with light, light at the end of the tunnel, and it looks forward to the coming of the Messiah. Now, it begins with, in that day I will raise up the fallen booth of David and wall up its breaches. He's going to restore David's the, the kingly line. Um, that is not in any way a prophecy, a prophecy of the restoration of the northern kingdom. Because Jeroboam II was not a descendant of David. That nation is done. That line is done. It's gone, and it won't come back. But the true king, David, and his true line will be restored and will be eternal. Let's read verses 11 through 15. In that day, I will raise up the fallen booth of David and will wall up its breaches. Breaches. I will also raise up its ruins and rebuild it as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all nations who are called by my name, declares the Lord who does this. Behold, days are coming, declares the Lord, when the plowman will overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, uh, him who sows seed, when the mountains will drip uh, sweet wine and the hills will be dissolved. Also, I will restore the captivity of my people, Israel, and they will rebuild the ruined cities and live in them. They will also plant vineyards and drink of their wine and make gardens and eat their fruit. And I will also plant them on their land and they will not again be rooted out from their land, which I have given them, says the Lord your God. Okay, so there is a, 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 a um, there is a renewal uh, and a restoration that's promised, not a restoration of that nation. And, and there seems to be a promise that this includes all nations. They may possess the remnant of Edom and all nations who are called by my name. That could mean they're going to uh, dominate um, militarily all the nations around them, or it could mean that all nations are going to be included in this kingdom, the kingdom that God has promises. Historically, it can't mean the first, can it? It just can't because that didn't happen. Israel did not become a superpower again, and it is not to this day. But God's eternal kingdom does include everyone. This something we didn't notice yesterday about that, that, that last um, uh, edict of judgment. God mentioned the nations around and talked about the Philistines. I moved the Philistines from Captor. I brought you up out of the land of Egypt. I moved the Arameans from Kerr. God has accomplished um, the, 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 the migration of, of peoples. Um, Kaftor is Crete. The Philistines are from Crete. They're from, from the islands. They're, they're Westerners. They're not, they're not, they're not Middle Easterners in origin. Um, the, the Aramean homeland is Kerr. Uh, you were in Egypt in captivity. I brought you up. I move, I move peoples around. And it seems like he's saying, I'm going to move peoples into my kingdom, all nations into my kingdom. Verse 13 is so vivid. Days coming when the plowman will overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes him who sows seed. The plowman will not even finish his row before the reaping starts. That's how, that's how the prosperity is going to be. It's going to be my prosperity, not the prosperity you get by cheating the poor and by, by, by longing for the Sabbath to be over so that you can go out and make more money. But the prosperity that I bring spiritual prosperity that I bring in my kingdom. And when you have that, it will never be taken from you. I'm going to establish you in this spiritual prosperity. Um, 
Uh, you will never again be rooted out from your land, says the Lord. Again, as we end this, this is a spiritual promise, not a political promise, not a geopolitical promise, not an economic promise, but a spiritual promise. It can only be kept in that way um, because history does not bear out what he's talking about. Otherwise, it just does not. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining me for this study of the book of Amos. We'll start talking about the book of Obadiah when we are together next time. Um, Obadiah, a, a short, one of the shorter of the minor prophets, and then we're going to be looking at Jonah, which is a singular book in all the Bible. There's nothing else like it anywhere. Uh, so I look forward to our study continuing. Thank you for joining me for five good minutes today.